you know, people are welcome to take me a photo if you do Photoshop. <laughs> you have to remove all the imperfections and leave only the perfections. <laughs> Honorable Minister, it's really a pleasure to have, to have you here. I'm not very good at protocol. I'm a scientist. All I know how to do is just work. And, and that's it. Thank you very much, Kugu. You talk too much, but thank you. <laughs> um, if I, you know, I am I'm the one for the underdog. I, I, I stayed in the Eastern Cape because you, the news media will say, oh, it's a poor province, and nothing good ever comes out of it. You know, Rhodes University uh, is too small. Uh, nothing good can come out of it. For me, those things are challenges. I, I am the one for the underdog. This is why I'm here. The recognition, if I just want to, not talking too long, but to say the recognition of Rhodes University as a nanotechnology hub really started in 2007 with the award of the chair in nanotechnology. And at the same year, the MinTech, which um, the nanotechnology had a number of phases. One was the nanotechnology equipment with the NRF, then there were the nanotechnology innovation centers. And the MinTech center approached us, I mean, we had to write proposal. It's MinTech here, yeah, I haven't seen them. Okay, we had to, to write proposal and so on, and we were awarded the MinTech part of the Nanotechnology Innovation Center. What that meant is we trained students here at Rhodes, and then the development of whatever we, we develop here at Rhodes will be done at MinTech. So it was that type of partnership. It wasn't just partnership with me, it was also partnership with University of Western Cape and University of Johannesburg. But we are the only university that realized that when Mintex say have a physical space for equipment, we believed it and we actually negotiated very hard with somebody very tall in this building called Professor Walker. <laughs> very straight, but you know, I, I, that, I don't try to sweet talk him quite often. So we created a space. And for the first three years, the Mintech, the whole idea of the nanotechnology strategy was to create machines, equipment. When something is nano, it needs very big equipment, very expensive equipment. And that is what the government has realized we needed. And that's what Mintech did at the beginning for the first three years. Of course, um, money that is not forever. But once you've opened up the spaces for me, I was able then to apply for funding from everywhere. Yes, a lot from the NRF, thank you very much, Nanotechnology Equipment Program, but I'm a little bit Disappointed because I think now to know the equipment program before you the university didn't have to put anything. Why did we change that? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, when the new tech node was formed, I always believe in education for all. I involved the University of Limpopo, University of Western Cape, and University of Pretoria, whereby we were offering bursaries for them and they could come and use our facilities here. Uh, why did I start there and not in the Eastern Cape? I just knew people there uh, at that time, but now I mean everybody is involved in, in the program. And I must also thank Rhodes University. First of all, for negotiating the space and renovating the space, uh, and for Professor Walker to really agree, it was difficult to move such a big organization to get the space. And Rhodes University for creating two posts. I, I will explain in a little while that this, this center is used by so many people all over the country and all over the world. And Rose University created two full-time posts to man the equipment. And I'm very grateful for that. We wouldn't be able to succeed without that because, I mean, I just sit in my office. According to one of my students, I sit in my office and do nothing. Um, <laughs> this, the, the new equipment that has arrived makes the Eastern Cape when you combine with NNMU, the high resolution term there, it makes us the hub of nanotechnology. We really are. People can say we are poor, they can say our education is low or whatever, but we will make a difference slowly. One of the things that I really, really encourage is that um, students who use the facilities must have hands on. Because if we are going to develop and start to build our own technology, we ha students must learn how to use technology. And some of the things we put together are such. And that is education. We are not always going to rely on the West or someone else. We've got to do it ourselves. 
So students must have hands on. And this is a true national facility, Honorable Minister, because Dr. Jansen, you have to remember, when you get to UKZ and you are the Vice Chancellor, remember this, your university uses this facility. And be kind to us. <laughs> it is used, University of the Northwest, it's used by the whole country. Lately, it's farmers. Yeah, the other day they were analyzing grass. I have no idea, but we just do what we are told. But why, why is such this um, institute, um, center so important that even international visitors come to use this center? We get people coming from Kuwait, uh, Turkey, China coming to use this center. The reason is, under this one roof, you have so many different high-level techniques. You take your sample, you move to one equipment, you move to the other, you move to the other, under one roof. And you get the best results under one roof. And we have the most capable technical staff. Hint, hint, minister, uh, no, 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 the vice chancellor, technical staff. We need to keep them going. It's very, very important. But we also have our sister universities, um, University of... Um, Fort Hare and Walter Sewell University, who we work very closely with. Uh, we also want to encourage them that their students should come and use the, the facility. The facility has also hosted a number of people. Parliament Portfolio Committee um, has been here a number of times. And really it's very interesting to have so many different parties in one, I'm not a politician, but it's fascinating. <laughs> Deputy, well, this year, if Parliament Petroleum Committee comes, maybe we will have EFF, but we have to deal with it. Deputy Minister of Science and Technology has also been here. We get visits from United States universities, vice chancellors, and so on. We have hosted the Swiss and French embassy here. So we host a lot of things. We've also, we also have school visits. We, we have schools who come to an ordinary people. Those equipment look like just monstrous machines, and some of them look like a space shift, or some of them may look like a submarine, they mean nothing. But if you put these young people in front of them, they have a meaning. Um, now, the question is, how do we maintain this facility? That is my greatest nightmare. We can have all these facilities, what happens 10 years from now? I don't see it because of that. I, I just don't want to see this thing, what do you call it, the white elephant? Because just to maintain it on, on a yearly basis is tough. But to keep it going, to keep, um, so that we haven't wasted ministers' time to come here, that 20 years from now this doesn't exist, would be a tragedy. So, challenge is to the Vice Chancellor to, do, to see what they, yeah, they can do for that. Without talking too much, really, I just need to thank all the people who have helped in, in, in getting the students, first of all. Minister, the roads is where leaders learn. They have to be leaders. That's why I say you are going to run this thing today. Let's see whether you are leaders or not. Let's see how you can handle yourself in front of people. And I thank them. I thank all the chemistry, pharmacy, biochem, micro. I don't know whether they are here. And biotech, I invited all graduate students. Left to me alone, we would have been in a field where all students attended. Because I think listening to a minister who's so popular is very important. Again, I want to thank again the Faculty of Pharmacy for really being good sport with good space. I need to thank our technical staff in chemistry, Andre Francis and, 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 um, and the team. Let me tell you, when this equipment arrived last week Friday, it couldn't go through the doors. The doors had to be put apart. And it was Friday afternoon. And I had all our technical staff, and I think people from maintenance, I don't know what they call themselves, Everybody was here to put the door apart and then to put the door together. Then, when the, when the equipment was slightly out of the box, there was a problem with the pressure of the building wiring. The technical staff stayed here until 8 p.m. Going through the building to find out what the problem is. And the maintenance people in blue overalls were here. Give them credit. Our technical people are committed. Marketing and communications, I have no style. They are the ones that did this. Banners you will see. It's our marketing and communications. They, they are very thankful and also organizing all of this. I'm not going to name them by name, but they organize all of this. And then Dr. Ian Lange and the team really created such a beautiful space. I have no style. I mean, I just live with everything the way it is. And the cleaners, 
who have been so helpful. You know, we forget our cleaners. Are you here, cleaners? I did invite you. Where are they? Oh, I did invite them. Um, they, they, I mean, they were here this morning to make sure that uh, the whole building looks good. And administrative staff of the chemistry department, in particular my personal assistant, Gail, thank you very much. I don't know how you put up with me, Gail. Uh, a lot of people don't, but thank you for putting up with me. And I will get away from this stage now. Thank you.